How is Dallas practice this week, Good. knowing his role is going to be elevated? I mean, his role is what it, what it has been. You know, I mean, he obviously has carried the load in, uh, uh, in, in games before and certainly against uh, North Carolina. I think uh, Eduardo and uh, Gus have been good. So, again, you'll see all three of those guys in the game early. With that, with Dallas, do you plan on him taking over on the role the way Duke did, the percentage of the carries? Or do you like to do what you mentioned three guys? Do you split them up, or is Dallas going to handle a full load? Well, again, Dallas is number one right now. We're going to keep evaluating them every day and see who's earned what reps in the game and then go from there. So we'll look at the tape today. We'll look at it again tomorrow, and then uh, – We'll, uh, we'll assign the reps accordingly, but uh, again, I have no, uh, I have no doubt that Dallas can handle the load as, as we all do. With, with Clements and Gus, then is there? A, do you have a number two yet? Like who the second guy in will? Be? They're all competing every day. Every one of those guys is competing for reps every day, including Walter Tucker. Did you have a chance to go see Duke? I know you said yesterday. You I have not. I'm going today. I have not. Yesterday, uh, Monday and Tuesday are just crazy for me. So today uh, is still crazy on the meter, but. Uh, Tower been crazy, so I'm going to get out there and uh, see him this afternoon. We know, we know who some of the senior leaders are. Obviously, I'm, I'm just curious. Can you sort of point out some of the young guys, maybe freshmen or even second-year guys, who are really showing some nice leadership characteristics? Yeah, I think um, Tom Fentress, he's not a first- or second-year guy, but you know he's a walk-on that's uh, done a great job uh, as a leader for us, uh, especially on special teams. Corn Elder you know, clearly stands out. Um, you know, Guys like Kwan Muhammad last uh, Saturday night weren't too big. They, what, the moment wasn't too big for him. Did he play, you know, brilliantly? No, but the moment was not too big for him, and, and he was a leader. Um, I, you know, guys, I'm sure there's others too. I mean, I, 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 I'd, I'd uh, you know, I'm probably gonna miss a few, but there, there are a lot of young guys that are stepping up, and uh, they know this time of year now you gotta, you know, it's go time. There's no question about it. But those are the guys that jump out right now. Can you teach guys to be leaders or help them along in the process to be leaders, or are they just basically born leaders? No, I mean, recruit no, you have to, you have to cultivate the leadership. Um, there's no question that. Some people uh, gravitate uh, towards it, uh, you know, earlier in life. But it may be because more, you know, uh, sociological factors. Maybe because they have more opportunities to. Um, they, uh, you know, didn't have some challenges that maybe some other people did. So they had a chance to, you know, to be in those situations and get ahead. But I, I don't think there's any question you can cultivate leadership, and um, I think that's evidenced, you know, by a lot of the guys on, on our team, you know, um, that have grown in that in that role. So. Um, Obviously, uh, there are born leaders, uh, but you have to cultivate them. And the biggest thing is that they have to share the same vision and mes messaging uh, as the head coach because it's got to be uniform. You know, one of the things that uh, Mark said the other day was that he wanted to see Dion kind of take it up even more, yep. um, especially physicality. How much do you, are you hoping to see some I of that I agree with that. There? You know, we really haven't seen him yet. You know, to be honest with you, he's, he's, he's getting better. Um, he, uh, physically, there should be no issue now. Conditioning-wise, there should be no issue. Um, but, this, but clearly, there was, uh, you know, a learning curve for him in terms of coming back after being out for so long. And um, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to see that. You know, we haven't really seen it yet. We haven't seen like a fury from him like we saw last year, where he was just so poised and so confident and so comfortable that he was just flying around. We really haven't seen that yet. He hasn't really imposed his will on the game. He's getting better with his calls and uh, his comfort level, uh, but we really haven't seen that from him yet. And uh, you know, hopefully in November we can see him and get that back from him. Well, Sean Scott, you mentioned just continuing to improve and work on practice a little bit. Something like that. Is there a thought at all that the way the games keep going on to redshirt him at all, or is you, would you like to get No, him? he's, he's got to play. We only have five receivers right now in the rotation. We have six on scholarship. You know, we're, we're low anyway in terms of our scholarships right now uh, at wide receivers, so we have to augment that, number one. Uh, just from a recruiting sense, but as, it, but as it relates to Rashawn, you know, like everybody else in the coastal, we all want to play six more games. You know, so that's a lot of football. You're talking from now until, until January, hopefully, and um, you know, uh, he's getting better every day. He's helped us on special teams the last you know two weeks. So uh, I thought today he, he, he improved. So we need that from him. He play, he's played a lot of football for us, and, and he's made a lot of big plays. We need we need his help right now. Do you guys track Emmys by player? We sure do. Overall, Player and unit. Yep. Overall, the season, just the team's total Emmys. Have, they, have you seen a nice trend towards them getting better, less Emmys? Oh, it's, it's, not even, it's not even close. It's, it's uh, half of where we were, you know, a year ago. Um, some cases even less than that. So, uh, just in terms of our units, we're, our, our, our mental errors are way down. So, you know, again, uh, guys are getting more comfortable. Uh, guys have more experience playing with more poise. 
Uh, now we need to draw on that. We need that. You know, we need that certainly last week in that environment. We're going to need it this week, given who we're playing, uh, their, their toughness, and, and what they represent, and uh, obviously the challenge here in the Coastal. Can a great team like FSU make the mental errors, make the mental errors jump up? And do you see a jump in that? Oh, game no, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can, no, yeah. The opponent can help you. Can make, make you mistakes. make more, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. You know, but that's what it's all about. That's why it's really important for you to not worry about the opponent, but trust, you know, your training and block it all out and have poise. Yeah. You know, I think that's a great point. But there's, there's no question that uh, we saw some errors in that game that were uncharacteristic of some players. And it's either a function of losing your poise or trying too hard, trying to, I got to make this play. And really, what you got to do is do your job. And if what they call over there allows you to make a play, then go have the confidence to go make that play. But you don't have to make a play on the next play. You need to do your job. So if you're running a corner route, it needs to be eight steps. You know, if, if, if you're in pass protection, you need to block your man, not think you have to block three men. And, and uh, so hopefully we learned a lot from that. And, you know, we're going to have to as we, as we move forward this week. All right, I'm melting, guys. Thank you.